Section two of the settlement unit is about urban trends and issues of urbanization. So we're just going to look into a bit of theory and we'll also look at case studies of renewal and the concept of world cities. So when we're looking at it, uh, good to have a few definitions. Urbanization is the increase of the population in there due to migration or whatever other reason. Uh, urban growth then, or urban sprawl, that is the expansion of the physical boundaries of the city. Suburbanization then is the increase of the suburbs, the area that occupies the outskirts of the city center, so it's on the urban fringes. Counter-urbanization is the motion of people back into rural areas. And re-urbanization are those people that moved to suburbs and um, rural areas and are moving back into the cities in like the inner cities and areas like that into places that were formerly um, maybe a bit derelict. Okay, so uh, yeah, there's a couple of good definitions to know as we're moving forward. Now we've seen this before, we can see the expansion and the growth of people living in urban areas. So urbanization is a global trend. We are about here, 2020 to between 2020 and 2030, so it's about 50% in a global way, but that's not evenly distributed, as we said before. Uh, we're going to see the distributed then is mixed up into multiple factors. So as part of that then, we would see, uh, yeah, this growth, the main growth is just happening in the more developed countries, generally speaking. Uh, so we see the very high percentages for a very long time. Sort of 40% and below then we're working with low income countries or very large middle income countries. So it's actually taking a lot of time for them to grow and to uh, develop and to keep up with still a high percentage of the population in more rural territories. We can also see there's exceptions to this, uh, specifically South America is not following the exact same trends as they're going through urbanization a little bit quicker and some Northern African nations as well. So that's a general trend on a global scale. Um, when we're looking at the concept of megacities, which are cities with a population of over 10 million people, we can see that there's quite a few now, but there was only three in 1960. So we can see this is showing the obvious trend towards growth of uh, urbanization and in major cities. When we're looking through them as well, we can start to see trends of particular countries as well that are seeing this more than others. And some of these countries are the ones that are actually on the list up below 40%. So let's have a look at a couple of big growers here, which is the MIC's middle income countries like uh, China, for instance, has multiple urban areas. They have uh, the biggest, they're now the second biggest population in the world. So we would expect that they would have a lot of mega cities. Now, they were not on the list in 1960, and now they are continuing to add to the list as they're growing there. So we see quite a few uh, from China there. The other major one to note then is going to be India. So we see India appearing multiple times here and they have different economic uh, areas, economic cores scattered throughout their country. Um, and Delhi, of course, up there as well. So aside from that, then we have China, India making up quite a high amount. There's some countries that have a growing uh, urbanization in middle income countries, but to this date, they might only have like one major mega city like Manila there as well and Jakarta, Istanbul, but that's set to rise. A couple of the classics like uh, London, Tokyo, uh, Paris were the old ones that we used to have. Those three were the classic ones. Uh, where's Paris? Paris is right down there now uh, compared to the other ones and we see growths then of newer ones like Kinshasa in the Congo there. Um, and yeah, so it's a total growth there. USA has a couple. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the general trend right now for mega cities. So apart from these, there's loads of urban spaces that are expanding, growing, getting bigger and developing. We can see that there is a bit of a difference here. Uh, what's quite interesting, we mentioned Latin America and the, Car the Caribbean then. Um, so we've got uh, more developed regions. They had over 50% of urbanization by 1950, and they grew to sort of like an 80% and above uh, at the moment. So that's been quite stable for quite a long time. We see that Latin America has surpassed that actually, as urbanization is happening faster there. So they were behind in 1950 and they expanded beyond. We can see that the States is also anticipating the trajectory to 2050. So this isn't uh, guaranteed, but this is where the trends are showing us and where they are going. 
we see that close behind the uh, that then is coming up with Asia and Africa as two distinctive territories, even though they're very big territories and broken into uh, several different ones. We're just going to categorize them there overall. So we can see that their growth is set to kind of match each other. There's no real difference between them, um, but we can see that they're both moving towards the same direction rapidly. And because of this, if we look at the world, we can see it's going from 30% to an anticipated kind of 70% uh, by 2050. So it is the world population of Africa and Asia that are going to stem this real uh, further growth from the 2020s to the 2050s. So that's the way it's going right now. Now, LEDCs then uh, slowly beginning to see urbanization taking off. Uh, LEDCs, by, by the way, we can talk about MICs, LICs there. Um, why they're leaving rural areas, there's less jobs. Uh, it's working in primary industries. They were subsistence farming, living off uh, what they grew. And now they're looking for jobs in industries like manufacturing. There's more investment then and pull the factors into the urban area, higher income and more uh, things like electricity, sanitation, internet and opportunities there. People are willing to go into an area and suffer a little bit more in order then to have a better life in the long term. Newly industrialized countries are seeing this happening. So we have two different groups that we might want to discuss when we talk about newly industrialized countries. Uh, and those are the uh, BRICS and Mint countries, I guess would be a good one just to have in the back of your head always when we're talking about that. So BRICS and Mint. So these two are kind of important. Um, they are pretty much MICs. Um, okay, guys, if you like, please subscribe and let me know if you have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them. I hope that helped. If you want to continue learning, the rest of the course is below in our link. Um, you can sign up and learn there through all these videos. There's over 10 hours of videos of the content. Um, and this teaches you everything about the case studies, the concepts in each section, and you can just take it at your own pace. Um, within each course, then you'll get a PDF printout, some short questions and a video.